Hi friends, this is Akshata here. I have got a request from quite a few of my viewers as how to make homemade yogurt or dahi. So today I'll be showing you how to do that. Now what you require is some milk. A little, I mean you have to warm your milk or if it's a new packet that you're opening, you have to boil your milk and bring it down to a little bit of a room temperature. Now, the, what we do at our home is, you know, the previous day's milk that is there, we warm that up, also bring it down to room temperature, and then we add a little bit of the new milk. It's like a proportion of either half, half, or three-fourth, one-fourth, depending upon how much of the previous day's milk is left. And then you require some dahi, homemade dahi, which is already made. You cannot use the store-bought one. For some reason it doesn't work and you don't really get you know very good and thick and nice dahi. If you're making it for the very first time then you might have to ask either your neighbor or somebody, a relative or someone close by who has been making homemade dahi. I mean that really gives you the thick and amazing dahi at home. So you take a bowl, you can use any type. I like using ceramic or glass, even steel works, plastic works. Only thing you have to remember that your milk has to be at room temperature. It should not be hot. It should not be ice cold from the fridge. It should be at room temperature. Now, I like to use a strainer. The reason being, uh, nobody likes to have a very, you know, uh, a dahi with layers of skim or cream that uh, comes on the surface of the milk. So we all like to have clean, you know, uh, very nice dahi thick and clear so my trick is first that you take the previous day's milk in that way you can use up your previous day's milk and strain it and then to whatever remaining portion is there you just add your new fresh milk And now, uh, there's also one thing I learned from my mother-in-law that during the winter time, you require to use more of the amount of the dahi that you're putting into uh, the milk. And during summer, you need to use a little less. The reason being in the summer, it's hot, the weather is hot, so you know the dahi, you require a little less dahi, the dahi gets set also very fast. Whereas winter, because of the, uh, the climate and it's cold, you need to use a little more dahi and maybe keep your the milk out for a longer time once you have put the dahi in it so I normally take about three fourth of a teaspoon you don't need to use a lot when you're making three fourth of a teaspoon in winter you might have to use one teaspoon that's all and I like to stir it in you know by counting 100 times because that is uh, it evenly it goes and spreads into the entire milk evenly so you know uh, it's just been a habit that hundred times you know I just it, it just happens I mean the milk the dahi really becomes very nice the next the after 12 hours so now I normally make the dahi early in the morning I mean when I'm boiling the milk and by evening so if I start by 7 in the morning, by 7 in the evening or 7.30, my dahi is already formed. And then we like to refrigerate it. So, we want to stir this for about 100 times. And also ensure that the vessel in which you are making your dahi is very clean and nice. And then you just have to cover it up and keep it in a nice warm place not in a very hot place in some particular place in your kitchen you know uh, I keep a designated place a very it's a little bit warm and a little bit in a dark corner and uh, then you get this amazing after 12 hours you get amazing dahi like this thick and yummy 
to eat it's not very sour it just has a little bit of a sour element so i hope you like this short recipe uh, on how to make homemade dahi if you need any, have any questions please leave your comments and questions in the comment box below i'll be very happy to answer that so this is akshita signing off until another recipe until another video take care bye making this beautiful curd rice or dahi rice now here i have about 1 and 1/2 cup of cooked rice i'll leave the instructions as to how i've cooked the rice in the description box below here i have a cup of a curd i'll also leave a link of how i prepare my dahi or curd at home i've just beaten it up a, a bit with a spoon here is half a teaspoon of mustard seeds or mori this is half a teaspoon of black pepper some salt to taste half a teaspoon of cumin half a teaspoon of hing or asafoetida a few fresh curry leaves this about 2 to 3 red chilies and this is about 1 teaspoon of chana dal and some ghee which i'm going to give a, a fortni or a tadka now i'm going to make put the cooked rice into a large into a bowl a mixing bowl now to that i'm going to add my curd It's very easy friends to prepare your own yogurt or curd or dahi at home. So please check out the link in the description box as to how you can make your own homemade dahi. Now give all of this a nice mix. Now I've used regular cooking rice at home which we use at home for cooking. You don't need to use basmati or anything. Now I've just added some salt and the pepper. Now you can add the pepper also as per your taste if you like a lot of pepper you can add more if you don't like pepper you can skip it out but the pepper does add a lovely flavor to this dish so mix everything thoroughly now the rice also has to be nice and soft it shouldn't be parboiled it shouldn't be undercooked it should be nice and you know really cooked well so i have left the description in, on, in the description box as to how i have cooked my rice now i have heated up about half a one and a half tablespoon of ghee or clarified butter you need to use ghee for this recipe now i'm just going to fry some peanuts this is completely optional if you don't like peanuts just skip this step but i love that crunch of peanuts in this recipe so i've just fried the peanuts till they are a little bit light golden brown in color and then i'm just going to take them and keep them aside now this is a really nice recipe you know if you want to cook up something really quick and it's also very soothing and very nice to have you can make this with fresh rice or you can make it with leftover rice also but your rice has to be little on the softer side then it really you know elevates the flavor of the dish now i'm just going to add my chana dal just fry it a little bit now keep the flame between low and medium now i'm going to add my mustard seeds the cumin the hing or asafoetida the curry leaves and the curry leaves do splutter so just stay a little bit far from the flame and now the red chilies and we're going to fry the red chilies till they are a little bit on the crispy side now i'm using regular dried red chilies So just fry them till they are a little bit crispy. And what happens is when you add all these elements to this clarified butter or ghee, they actually flavor the ghee with these beautiful flavors. So that really elevates and makes the dish even more beautiful and special. So now you can see that I'm frying the red chilies a bit. no over fry them also just for about half a minute and now friends we are going to add this beautiful tadka that we have prepared to our rice and the uh, you know agrahi mixture and uh, the the aroma in my kitchen is just beautiful at the moment you have to make this dish to experience it and now give everything a nice mix so the tadka or the food me or the tempering actually goes into the rice and the dahi very well and flavors all of it so give it a very nice mix very be very gentle 
and now all we have to do is just make our dish look pretty and you know really uh, appetizing by decorating it with some beautiful uh, coriander leaves garnish it with some coriander leaves and uh, you know just bring out the look of the dish so you know everyone really feels like digging into it so decorate it with some or garnish it with some lovely coriander some chopped coriander and now all i have to do is just add this lovely peanuts which i fried like i said it's completely optional but it does give a lovely crunch to this dish so add these beautiful uh, peanuts to the dish and friends or oh, you're ready to serve this dish now you can have the dish right away like this but i like to serve it a little bit on the chiller side so i like to put it into the refrigerator for about 5 to 10 minutes and then you know serve it nice and chilled i hope you like today's recipe guys give it a try it's really really amazing full maharashtrian curry recipe now here are all the ingredients let me take you through them so this is about 1 cup of homemade dahi curd or yogurt you can use the ready made uh, dahi also this will be about 2 cups of water or as needed some salt to taste then about 2 teaspoons of sugar this is about 2 tablespoons of chickpea flour or besan one light green chili cut fine one inch of ginger grated a few curry leaves about 7 to 8 which i've chopped fine about 1 tablespoon of coriander for garnish now in the uh, spices we're going to use half a teaspoon each of mustard seeds turmeric powder asafoetida and cumin and about 1/4 teaspoon of fenugreek or methi seeds i'm going to be using this wooden uh, you know whisk also called ravi you can use a normal whisk too now we're going to start by making the buttermilk or the tak or the chaas so i'm going to empty my dahi i have a recipe of how i make my homemade dahi or yogurt or curd at home i'll leave a link below now if you want to find any of my recipes just type the recipe name in the youtube search button and type akshita's recipes next to it so if you're looking for uh, you know curd recipe or dahi just type dahi akshita's recipes and my recipe will pop up that's the easiest way to find me now i'm going to add some salt to taste and i'm going to whisk this now generally i whisk this you know counting about 100 so that i get a you know very smooth kind of texture so you can do that too now we're going to add some water now i'm using this particular jar because it you know it has a pouring uh, kind of a outlet so it's easier for me but you can use a regular vessel you can use a pot you can use anything where you can mix the ingredients together now i'm going to add the sugar now you can i'm adding 2 teaspoons of sugar but you can always adjust it to your taste now again whisk this really well again uh, you know uh we're going to add a little bit of the chickpea flour at a time and we're going to whisk this and we're going to ensure that there are no lumps of the chickpea or the besan that's very important for a very smooth curry so this is the most important part so add a little bit of the chickpea flour or the besan at a time and just keep on whisking it ensure there are no lumps at all Now what the chickpea flour or the besan does is it thickens up this curry. Now some people like the curry you know really thick some like it thin. So I will show you how to adjust the taste you know according to what you like it. So now you can see that my paste is lump free and it's nice and smooth. Now this is very important for a lovely uh, smooth curry. So now I'm going to heat up my pan. I'm going to add about 2 teaspoons of clarified butter or ghee. Now once my ghee is nice and hot, I'm going to first add half a teaspoon of my mustard seeds or mohori or rai. Let them splutter. Now we're cooking on a low to medium flame. Once that happens, you add your half a teaspoon of cumin seeds or jeera. Next we're going to add our chopped up green chili. Now you got to fry the green chili really really well. 
Now here you can see I'm using this iron kind of spoon. Don't worry, I'm not touching it too much to the base of the non-stick pan. But uh, you know, they say that you should make the curry with this iron uh, kind of a spoon if you have one. It's not compulsory. But they say that it's uh, you should use it when you're doing this. Anyway, so I'm adding the asafoetida or, or, or the hinga and I'm also adding the haldi or the turmeric powder. Now, I don't know how true it is, but the saying goes that, you know, okay, I'm going to add the curry leaves. They say that when you're making a uh, taak or curry and if you use this iron kind of spoon, it kind of soaks in all the iron or absorbs the iron. I don't know how true that is, guys. Anyway, so now I'm going to add the grated ginger. And I am going to fry the ginger really, really well. So I'm really being extremely gentle with the spoon so I don't want to spoil my pan. So don't be worried about it because I get lots of comments uh, as to Akshata, why are you using, you know, a steel spoon or wooden spoon? Don't worry, guys. I'm taking a lot of care of my cookware. Anyway, so now I'm going to add the fenugreek seeds or the methi seeds. And this also adds a nice little uh, element or, you know, a nice little uh, taste to the curry. So add that. And now we're going to saute everything really, really well. Now this curry can be, you know, had all by itself. Now I'm going to add this, uh, you know, the buttermilk that we made with the sugar, the salt and the uh, chickpea flour. So now you see I use that jar so that it's easier for me to pour it into the pan without spilling any. But like I said, you can use a normal bowl. Now, the most important thing in making this curry is you have to stir this curry continuously. Otherwise, there are chances of it, you know, uh, curdling. Uh, so just kind of uh, keep an eye on it. Don't just leave it by itself. So on a very low to medium flame, you add, uh, you know, keep stirring. Now you see, I want a little thinner consistency. So I'm adding a little bit more of water. But like I said, if you like a thicker curry, then don't add water. But if you want a very thin consistency, it's upon how much, you know, how you like your curry. Uh, on the basis of that, you add your water. So I just rinse the same buttermilk jar that I was using and uh, you know, put some water. So now the main thing is you got to keep stirring till it comes to a gentle boil on a low heat. Don't stop stirring it. And once it comes to a boil, immediately switch it off and just garnish it with some beautiful chopped up coriander. That's all guys. And this curry goes amazingly well with some hot rice or you can just have it all by itself. It's super delicious. So if you've never tried it out, do try it out and I'll...
here with yet another delicious and quick recipe. Today I'll be showing you how to make some dahi kebabs. So let's go through our ingredients. This is some hung curd. I will leave the instructions in the description box below as to how I prepared this hung curd. Then we require some bread crumbs. One and a half tablespoon of rice flour. You can also use corn flour. One and a half teaspoon of roasted cumin or jeera powder. One very small onion diced very finely. The paste of two light green green chilies and half an inch of ginger and salt to taste. Now you will also require some water in a plate. Because we are going to make kebabs or cutlets out of this hung curd. So first let us prepare our mixture. Now to prepare our mixture we will take this hung curd. To this we will add our very finely diced onion. Next goes in our ginger and green chilli paste, our cumin powder, some salt to taste and rice flour. This rice flour is a binding agent and now we are going to mix everything well together till everything gets well incorporated. Now once our mixture is well mixed, we are going to start making our kebabs. Now it is very important that you also keep a kitchen towel or a napkin because you're, you have to wipe your hands quite often. So what we are going to do is we are going to first wet our hands, take a little of the mixture form it into a small ball and then roll it into your breadcrumbs and press it down to get a kebab like this. Now what I like to do is I like to after I make this I like to keep it in my refrigerator for at least half an hour and then fry it. Now you can deep fry it, you can shallow fry it. These kebabs are just melt in the mouth kebabs. So you can make this like this. Here are my dahi kebabs ready. So I'll be keeping this in the refrigerator for at least half an hour and then we are ready to fry it. Friends, now it's been about half an hour and our dahi kebabs are all ready. Here I have some a plate lined up with some kitchen paper. And I have my oil heating up. So we are now ready to fry our dahi kebabs. You can shallow fry these. But they turn out nice and crispy. And soft in the center. If they are deep fried. Also remember to keep a little bit of gap between them. Don't overcrowd your pot. I learned this recipe from my sister-in-law Dr. Anagha. The first time she had made it for us it was just fabulous and we just couldn't believe this kebabs. They were so delicious. You have to try these kebabs out. Now once they start browning on the lower side, we will turn them so they fry evenly. This is a very good starter or just a snack item. You don't have to fry them for very long, just till they turn a little golden brown and then we will take them out very gently
and in this way I will fry the rest of my dahi kebabs. Again, your your stove top has to be from medium to slow. Don't fry it on a high fire, otherwise it will get burnt and it will not taste nice at all. Friends, dahi kebabs. Please do try out this recipe and please do let me know how it turned out in the comments box below. Please subscribe to my channel for many many more recipes and once you have subscribed please play, press the bell icon so every time I upload a new video you'll be the first one to know. This is Akshata. Until another video, take care. Bye.